Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me once more on House and Home. I am your host, Rosemary. In this episode, we spoke to Kevin Rao with his team from Sogeri Hikers. Richard Mack from Abu Snakomu shows us how we can prepare fish steak with asparagus. And I will teach you guys how you can turn papers into flowers. Since COVID started, a lot of tour companies were affected. Not only them, but the communities and the people working for them. Here is a group effort by Sogeri Hikers to provide job opportunities, maintain community relations, and most importantly, to inspire tourism locally. Let's hear from them. Hi guys, so I'm here at Vision City and we will we are about to board the bus to go up to Sogeri for the Sogeri with the Sogeri hikers, of course to hike. And I'm here with Jackie. Jackie, are you ready for this? Um, I'm amped to go. Ready to go get uh, camp at the site and um, well it's the first time there so it'll be nice to go to the waterfall as well, something I've seen on photos. So first time to go there. Really excited. Yeah, can't wait. <laughs> So getting out there and having fun, uh, enjoying the nature is uh, what I recommend you to get yourself refreshed from all the hard works, to, uh, especially of mostly residents. Um, I know everybody wants to do this, but they want the, if the security is guaranteed. Yeah. And um, I assure you that uh, for driving, as my partner Eti has said, we employ local people, uh, uh, local buses. So. Your driving up to here is safety, and uh, we engage the communities, the whole community, to actually take part when it comes to camping with your family out. Uh, hiking is something that like, most of us are so busy with our work and family and all that, and like. Coming here to hike, it's really nice. It's like a stress relief as well. Also to just get out of the city, busy life, and just enjoy the nature. We have some very beautiful spots out here that we don't really appreciate nature, but when we actually come here and see the nature, like the water here, the nice environment, like just, it's a good feeling. After the hike and the camp, when we go back home, it's like we just feel refreshed. It's like we regenerate and like, enjoy life here yeah. and it like, clears up our mind as well. For me as a working class, that's how I feel. I think some people have uh, donated a few stuff for the community here, which is very much appreciated. I want, them, want you guys to bring them forward here so that we can present it to the community. Before bro, let me meet. How much time killing me this morning? But only come stuff, all by kissing me black around. I like to first cargo sim and now stop Thanks everyone. I think that's about it. Uh, we'll start moving as soon as these boys turn up. We'll start moving. So it's not a competition. Knock and run. Walk at your own pace. We're going for camping. Knock and no good you sim barab na melo But this is another thing. Suppose you feel him eye round or anything, speak up. The boys wearing the yellow shirts. Just talk to them and then sit down on the side, they will assist you. My name is Dominiqueta, um, we are here at Manamiru village and we are going to start talking about the campsite Don Play. It's my first time and I'm very excited. As you can see ahead of me, there are people already walking. I am so super excited um, to see what's at the campsite. So come on and let's go check it out. Working for like 30 minutes now, and I have only one word for this um, it's stress free. Yes, so you know, the best part of this place is you know, it's from the upper part of the central province, and so the air is fresh, you know, and of course, the best part is the 
river. All right. This is just amazing. We are here at, I think it's a, it's a rapid, yeah, it's a rapid. So as you can see, it's it's, it's wonderful. So guys, we just arrived at the campsite and it looks amazing because it's just under the trees. And of course, we, we are going to unpack now and set up our tents and yeah. Okay, uh, my name is Franklin and we are here as a family and this is our first time to camp out. So we are really excited. Hi! Hi. <laughs> It took basically 40 minutes because I kept stopping to take photos. There's so many nice scenery around here. We crossed through a uh, few like bridges over the um, yeah. little streams. So that was like really nice. So yeah. definitely recommend this hike to families as well. It's, it's easy for the kids as well. So this is where we will be setting up our tents. Um, and after this, we have a lot of fun activities to do. Like we will have some water games. And of course, in that night, this is so exciting. We will be lighting up lanterns and at the back of us, it's, it's just an amazing view. We have a waterfall and yeah, we have very, it's so um, pristine and fresh. So I can't wait to show you guys what will happen in the night, of course. And yeah, the next day, following day. It takes about 45 minutes to get up here. Um, so to live early is better to enjoy the nature and, and then once you're done you take another 45 minutes to get back to town so yeah the earlier coming up the better go uh, earlier go back to hi i'm allison hi and i'm eileen may murepe um it's something different to do you know from the busy um city life to here so it's really nice. The waterfalls is really nice. This is our camp, um, our tents. So far, I enjoy the river. I mean, the waterfall. Yeah, and this will be my first. This is my first time to burn marshmallows on a bonfire and eating it. Yeah. <laughs> So we just sent out um, our lanterns and yeah, some of us are still down there, some of the hikers and a few of us are just enjoying the fire. <laughs> I think I hate my shoes. We don't employ only one villager. We employ across the Sogeri area. So if we do a hiking on that certain area, we employ people from there. As soon as we go to the other area, we employ all the uh, locals from there and the youths. And uh, we not only do that, every time we go and hike in those villages, we bring, um, uh, we donate stuff. We ask our hikers to donate clothes or anything that's good, and then we give it back to the community. And they all sleep with you, enjoy the whole night or weekend if it be, and um, they let you go. Uh, after that, so safety is guaranteed. It's been um, a success in the other, all the other trips that we've been doing so far, and everyone's been happy. Kids have been coming along with their parents and enjoying the day. So it's basically, you know, it's good for family and young people, old people, individuals that you think you're healthy and you, I mean, fit to walk. You're most welcome to come. Okay, go. Go, Rosemary. Go, go. go. So you saw me, I just jumped into the water, over the waterfall and it's the most amazing feeling ever. I swear your kids will love it. As you can see the kids are enjoying themselves more than um, adults like us. Hi, um, my name is Marianne. My name is Olivia. My name is Winifred. Um, so we came out for um, the repentance day just as a way of getting out of the city and um, would like to thank um, Kevin Rao and the Sagari Hikers and the organizing um, team that put this together. Hi, my name is Andrea and 
I enjoyed the campsite and and I enjoyed the people here and the and the place. It feels good to be out of the city. Hi, my name is Danielle. It's really good to get out of the city, feel fresh air, get in the jungle, camping. It's really good out here. Hi, I'm Sophie. This is my son Russell. Um, we decided to take a a day off from everything. We really enjoyed ourselves, we're connected. Hi, my name is Gloria Pesete. Um, the thing I love about this camp is everything. I'm going to go to the camp. I'm going to the looking to make your own room plus all plans from the camp, but she will come all based near camp. And the look at your all go back in. Um, we thank you, Sagari Hikers, for for a job well done. We came out um, as a way to get out of the city, and we definitely did enjoy our time out. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next the destination is going to be at Serenimu Dam. Just keep an eye out on the page. Uh, we'll be camping out on the island where Serenimu Dam is. Um, it's coming up end of September. Uh, we have um, a bus tour which is coming shortly, which is around uh, on the 18th and the 19th, which is Saturday and Sunday. If you want to join us, just give us a bus or send us a WhatsApp. Thanks Kevin and your team, that hike was awesome. I enjoyed it. Coming up after the break, we will turn papers into flowers. Welcome back guys. This time I will teach you guys how you can create flower using just paper and of course a table organizer to organize your table. First of all, you want to make sure that you have your papers ready. Um, it depends on you whether you want to use a hard um, paper or a soft paper for this. In this case, I'm going to start creating um, tiny flowers, uh, tiny, yes, tiny artificial flowers. So you begin by just folding them or folding the paper like this. And you keep folding. This is probably very simple and easy to do. You should have something like this. After you complete the folds. And then you just use a staple machine to Staple the middle like this. You want to make sure the staple pin doesn't come off. So it holds the center of the paper. So I'm using a glue gun to just glue the, the sides of these flowers together like this. It's best to use a soft paper for this, not a hard paper, or otherwise you'll get hard time gluing it together. I'm gonna do the next one. Fold, fold. It's safe to use a soft paper, I'm using a colored cartridge paper. I'm 
you do the same thing cut the edges and then you glue them or glue the sides again like this So what I'm going to do is just put them together, the first half and the second half. If you're working with a soft paper, you can use one, like one or you, you combine the edges or the folds together one round instead of doing two. I'm going to put them together to give us a nice flower shape using just paper okay have it this is the smaller wall flower using paper now i will make a big one which means i will use a bigger paper or the a4 full a4 size and also i will keep my folds a bit bigger so exactly like the small one, I'm going to just fold, fold and fold until I reach the end of the paper. Okay. So first I should, I think I should just cut the middle. So we work with one first. So I'm going to cut this paper in half again, like this. and fold you can do these flowers in different sizes using different colors if you want to paint your um, paper to the color you prefer that's fine again I'm gonna cut the ends of the paper And there you have it. That's how you can create a wall flower paper using a paper, of course, a bit of uh, glue and of course scissors with a stapler. I hope this gives you guys an idea on how you can use papers to beautify your house. I also told you guys that I will show you guys how you can create a table organizer, meaning something that can help you organize your table. But I will show you guys in the next episode. So keep watching House and Home. Welcome back. You're watching House and Home. Decorating your house is one thing. Keeping it in order and in an organized manner is another thing. Let's see ways where you can organize all your passwords from mobile phones to computers and even bank account codes. If you're someone that forgets passwords easily, check out these three tips. Number one, store passwords in one location. Number two, use a paper password storage solution. And number three, employ a digital storage option. Number one, Keep your usernames and password all in one location. Whether it's digital or physical, it's important that you have a single point of reference. Then, when you are trying to locate a password or username, simply go back to that one location and retrieve it. And every time you create a password or a username, record it in this single location. It is important that you record it in a place that is not so suspicious. Use a paper password storage solution. 
Utilize a blank notebook or a password book to organize passwords and usernames. Keep it handy near your computer so that you can write down all login credentials as they are created or changed. Be sure to consider the location of this password book. Don't leave it out in plain view when not in use to avoid theft and unauthorized eyes. Also, you might want to think about storing it in something fire resistant. Choose a digital storage option. Now there is a lot of online software that you can use to store your login credentials or password. This way your usernames and passwords can go with you anywhere and be accessed from any computer. The main drawback to digital storage is a possible hacking. So be sure to create a very strong password. I hope you find these different ways of organizing your password helpful. Stay with me. After the break, we have more. You're watching House and Home. We are approaching the month of September and surely there will be a lot of family gatherings. And in any family gatherings, food is always present. Richard Mark from Abu Snakumu will show us another recipe. And who knows, maybe you can use that to bring it to the next family gathering. Hi everyone, my name is Richard Mark. I'm from Abu Snakumu. Last episode, you would have seen one of our chefs come on to the show, Chef Vincent Ronald. He prepared a delicious meal. I'm back again, uh, and this time we're gonna cook uh, fish fillets with asparagus. Uh, like any fish, you need uh, ingredients. First of all, let's go, go through our ingredients. I've got, first of all, uh, the red wine vinegar, chopped diced onions, uh, cherry tomatoes, paprika, mixed spices, and then you got uh, salt and pepper, and then of course garlic and ginger. All this locally sourced, um, you can go into the markets and grab them for yourself. Um, this meal will basically take about 10 to 15 minutes, uh, depending on the size of the fish fillets. Uh, you can see both sides, and then uh, it goes into the oven for like four or five minutes, and then you can serve it with rice or even with cow cow or mashed potato, or basically just have it like this. Uh, it all depends on uh, what you feel and what you can afford. Uh, we'll see you when we uh, do the plating. Now with the fish, uh, depending on the type of fish, you can basically season to, to taste. Uh, for this case, we've got a thick slice of, uh, I think, tuna. So what we'll do is you just add um, salt and pepper for, for starters on both sides. Salt. You can uh, put any, any type of spices you want. Um, basically what we're trying to do is, because we want to fry, we want to try to get as much as possible the moisture out so that your fish is not overly soaked with water or another way. Yep. Yep. So we've seasoned the the fish. Now you want to just dry off the excess moisture. Excess moisture. And let it sit for one minute maybe. With the asparagus, there's a, uh, there's a soft pot, natural soft pot. So what you could do is just squeeze like this and it will naturally break. It should naturally break. That's your center. You can just discard the the, the top. You don't have to use uh, asparagus if you don't have uh, any at the local supermarket or at home. Uh, you can use any kind of vegetables at home. You can use cabbage, you can use broccoli, where we've got abundance in the highlands or in the markets. Just use anything. So long as you put it together with the, the fish and you bake them, it should just be just as well sweet. Uh, this don't take long to cook, so once you've prepped the fish, after you sear the fish, 
Uh, it should go together with the fish in the oven and that should take about three minutes or four minutes and then uh, we can ready, be ready to plate. Okay, so our fish has been sitting for almost a minute with seasoned salt and pepper. Uh, we've prepared our asparagus. Uh, now we're just gonna jump into the, uh, the pan and preheat it. And uh, we're gonna use a bit of uh, olive oil. Not much. Just turn the Now that's hot. Uh, we'll just give it a few minutes for that to 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 heat up. Um, what's important is you want to get the steaks in three minutes on each side. Always use this one. Go. Yep. Three minutes on each side. Let that uh, sit for three minutes on its side, and then uh, we'll add a few more ingredients, like our ginger and uh, our garlic. All right, so we we'll just give it a, a toss. That's the color we want. At this point, you can just add a little bit of garlic just so that we build the flavors. Ginger. While this is cooking, we're just gonna preheat the oven to 180 degrees and then uh, it should be ready to chuck in our fish and our, and our asparagus. I think this is ready now. We'll just take off the heat. You wanna add your onions. You also wanna add some of the cherry tomatoes, because that will build up your soup. Add in your paprika, your mixed spice, uh, I think this is a secret ingredient, uh, red wine vinegar. And lastly, the olive oil. That will start to reduce uh, all the ingredients. At that moment, you can just add in your asparagus strips in there. And then this can go into the oven for three minutes. Smelling something, I think it should be ready. It's been five minutes. Let's check on our tuna. Have a look at this. It's been in the oven for almost about four minutes. Wow, amazing, the aroma. I think it's, uh, it's, it's really done well now. I think it's time to plate. First of all, let's get the steak onto the board. We're gonna cut them. You can go ahead and plate your tomatoes. Just want to cut them in strips. Let's 
just want to get the soup. Lastly, just put some fresh, fresh tomatoes, cherry tomatoes. I like my tomatoes and then freshly, freshly cut uh, onions. You can add a bit of spice, uh, a little bit more. Salt and pepper. All get that? Uh, okay, now we are not taking long time. Ten plus minutes of salt. Uh, fish, we have salt and pepper long, we have season him. Let me put it in the frying pan. Uh, three minutes to each side. And then we uh, put it one time asparagus, no tomato, blah, blah, blah. and then we throw it inside long oven. Uh, let me cook, I think, five minutes or four minutes, depending. And then we uh, will serve him now. This is the final product we will now. He got um, fish fillets with asparagus served with mixed vegetables, one time rice. You can have it with cow cow, potato, or one kind of abus or kumu you got. You can find it as well now. I want them as per fish plate. Thank you to Master Star and Timmy Lesla program. We'll see you back here at uh, same time, same place. Long narb the segment when we black cookie on the narb look good black again. Thank you. Thank you, Richard, for sharing your recipe with us. Keep watching House and Home for more amazing recipes. Coming up after the break, we have more. Stay tuned. Thank you for staying with me. Now let's check out a few easy ways on how you can make your bathroom smell good. With these tips, you can save money from buying pricey air fresheners. Face it, no matter how many times we clean our bathroom, the bathroom has a tendency to still go back smelly in no call. In this case, essential oils to the rescue. Add a couple of drops of essential oil inside the toilet paper roll to release a fresh scent every time someone uses the TP. You'll be surprised at how much fresher your bathroom is with this quick trick. Keep the toilet brush clean, the easy way. It's no surprise that your toilet brush may be harboring some gems and odors. Fill your toilet brush holder with your favorite cleaner and let your brush soak it in. Baking soda as deodorizer. Get a small jar and fill it with baking soda. This will help you eliminate odors. Pour the baking soda into the toilet bowl. Leave it for some time before you flush it out. Baking soda is a natural scent absorber. And the pH balance of the baking soda will also kill bacteria. So it serves a double purpose. I have an exciting picnic spot to show you after these messages. Many times we are drowned by our daily activities that we forget to take time out from our comfort zone and relax. The cruise stop by at Yarrow Cry Rapids. It's a picnic spot. 
and that location is definitely a place where you should spend your next leisure time. See for yourself. Hi guys, this time I am at Yarrowcry Rapids. It's a picnic spot for families and friends, of course. It's it's located in Sogeri, just after Crystal Rapids. I haven't, I've not been to this place, but I'll go in and check out what activities um, that's available that you and your family can make use of. Come, let's go and check it out. This, this place is called Yarokrai, um, Yarokrai Rapids, if you want to Google or go online and post, um, uh, have a check out of it. Um, this place is convenient for families, you could do barbecue, you can do birthday parties. Um, the owner of the place name is Billy. Um, you can also contact us if you want to get in touch with this guy. Um, we can always uh, open, organize and arrange for meet up with these uh, locals. And uh, yes, they they have this beautiful place. Though they also they also includes um, kayaking, which they have kayaks available. They also have a tree house where you can come and uh, know a little bit more about it. So yeah, it is a beautiful place. Um, up just past Crystal Rapids and before Serenity Mudam. So Kevin, you've already arranged a group to visit this place. Tell us about it, right? Yes. Um, on every weekend, so one of either a Saturday or a Sunday, uh, mostly on a Sunday, I have hiking groups that come around. So this is where I take them. After the hiking, I take them here. They have lunch, light lunch, beautiful um, fruits to have, and then they have a swim cool off and then I take them back to um, uh, to Pomo's We welcome anybody, we welcome everyone who is an outdoor person who wants to get out of the city and um, have some fresh air, uh, fresh water, some swim, kayaking. Um, we are so happy to have you here. Um, Yarokurai Rapids is so happy to have you to be around their place. Um, don't forget whatever little money you are giving back, it goes back to the community and to help the people in need at this uh, trying times. Thank you so much, Kevin, for your time. I think we'll just go and have a look around, especially with the treehouse. And yep. you have a wall that has a... Yes, um, it is. Um, it's, it's towards that way. It's um, uh, an hour walk from here to there. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. I think we'll just check out the tree then, treehouse. All right, thank you so much. This place is amazing. I have kids, I can see kids enjoying themselves out here and then mothers down there. And I am about to check out this cool tree house. It's not just a tree house, it's significant to the people of this place. It's, it's built on a tree where you can always stand on top and look down to the river. We've explored all the places where you can kayak, where you can sit down and rest, and now we're about to check out this cool tree house. Come, let's go up. <laughs> this place is beyond amazing, and your children will enjoy. It's so Cool. The view up here is just awesome. Now from this part of the central province, the Koyari people, they are fond of having this as, because it has a cultural importance to them. I know that it's called Dobo traditionally, but there are other names to it. So, but right now, it gives me this really magnificent view. Like I'm looking over this rapid and everything seems so little from up here. 
This is Yarokrai Rapids picnic spot on the plateau of Sogeri, the highland of Central Province, where the river is clean and the weather is always cold. So we've checked out the first um, story. Now this is the last story of this tree house. So we've checked out this cool um, tree house and enough of exploring. Let's go down and enjoy the water. It's just amazing also down there. So yeah, come let's go. The river. Hi, uh, my name is Agnes Juana. I live and work in Port Mosby. This is my uh, third time here at Yarokrai. Um, Yarokrai is probably a better, or in my view anyway, a better alternative to Crystal Rapids. Uh, the water here is um, very, very, uh, probably much, it's cooler. Uh, and there's, as you can see in the background, there's kids swimming as well. So it's a good place to come and hang out with your families on the weekends. I hope you added to your bucket list of places to visit. Unfortunately, time has caught up with us. If you have any questions or queries regarding what was shown tonight, do not hesitate to contact my team and I via the contact details shown on your screen. Until then, I'll see you same time next Tuesday here on your number one to watch MTV.